Is multiple sclerosis genetic? Today we're going to talk about the different genes associated with multiple sclerosis risk and the specific percentage risk in different types of relatives of people with MS, for instance the children of people with MS. Now before we get into that I want you to just stop and comment on my haircut. This is a pandemic haircut that my wife gave me. She has no formal training. Pause the video and comment on what do you think about the quality of the haircut. Now moving on to genetics, the short answer to the question in the title of the video, and I will elaborate on this, is no. Multiple sclerosis is not a genetic disease per se. It is not inherited by transmission of specific genes such as cystic fibrosis or Tay-Sachs disease, but genetics do play a factor in the risk of multiple sclerosis. It is one of the many risk factors of multiple sclerosis. We believe that MS results from a complex interplay between genes and the environment. For instance, certain environmental risk factors that we know about would include things like Epstein-Barr virus, the vi virus that causes mononucleosis, which I have a separate video on if you want to take a look. Another risk factor would be low levels of sunlight exposure, and I have a video on that topic. Some other risk factors would be smoking, obesity during youth, and where you live. If you live in an area where multiple sclerosis is prevalent, and there may be other lifestyle risk factors such as hygiene and diet. But we think that genes may predispose your immune system to having a certain tendency to interact with the environment in a specific way, and many, many genes have been associated with MS risk. And we have these genome-wide association studies looking at genetics and MS. Perhaps the most famous study was done at University of California, San Francisco, directed by Dr. Stephen Hauser. So virtually all of the genes associated with MS have probably already been discovered. Now many of these genes have a very weak effect effect on multiple sclerosis risk. Almost all the genes have something to do with immune system function. They have to do with cytokine receptors or parts of the major histocompatibility complex and things like that. But many of these genes have a very weak effect, maybe only increasing multiple sclerosis risk by 10 or 20 percent for instance. But some genes have a larger effect. The gene that is most associated with multiple sclerosis risk is a gene called HLA DRB1-1501, and this gene is part of the major histocompatibility complex type 2, which is involved in how your immune system presents foreign proteins to immune cells. So it sort of influences how your immune system interacts with the environment. However, even if you have two copies of the bad allele of this gene, you still only have an eight-fold increased risk of multiple sclerosis compared to the general population. So in the United States, for instance, it's estimated the risk of MS over your life is about 1 in 350. So even if you have two copies of this bad gene that's most associated with MS risk, maybe your risk would be about 1 in 40. So doing genetic testing doesn't really tell you anything, and it's not really recommended except for research purposes. Now, uh, let's get into the specific risk in different relatives. Now for distant relatives such as cousins who only have a one-eighth genetic relatedness to you or half-siblings or nieces or nephews that only have a one-fourth genetic relatedness to you, the risk is relatively low, estimated to be about one to two percent. Now in children the risk is a little bit higher. Now for a lot of these relatives the risk is dependent on whether the relative is a female or male because women in general have about a three-fold increased risk of multiple sclerosis compared to males and that's true for many other autoimmune diseases. So the female child of someone with multiple sclerosis is estimated to have around a 3% risk whereas a male child of someone with multiple sclerosis has about a 1% risk and this is uh, the average of multiple studies roughly speaking. Speaking. Now, if you look at um, other first-degree relatives, such as siblings, sisters, and brothers, or parents, the risk is about the same. 3% for women, female relatives, 1% for male relatives. Now, of course, if you're talking about parents, the risk could be a little bit lower because if someone has not had symptoms by age 50, presumably the risk of them developing multiple sclerosis later would be a little bit less. Now, interestingly, if you look at dizygotic or fraternal twins, the risk is a little bit higher than a random sibling. So a dizygotic or fraternal twin is a twin that has no special genetic relatedness to you. So they're no closer in genetic relationship than a random brother or sister, but they did develop in the same womb. So they may have some shared environmental risk factors, such as month of birth. For instance, it's known that if you were born in May, you have a slightly increased risk of multiple sclerosis. We also think vitamin D levels during a woman's pregnancy may influence future risk of multiple sclerosis, for example. So in dizygotic, 
homozygotic fraternal twins, the risk is around 7%, a little bit higher. Now, some people have a stronger genetic relationship with people with MS. For instance, if you have both a sibling and parent, for instance, your mother and your sister both have MS, the risk has been reported to be higher, around 13%. If you have a sibling and two affected parents, so both your mother and father and brother all have MS, your risk may be as high as 24%. And if you have an identical twin or monozygotic twin who has identical genetics to you, the risk has been reported to be about 31%. Now, people actually think that 31%, although astronomically higher than the general population risk, is still fairly low. If you think about it, this is someone who has identical genetics, was born in the same womb at the same time, with the same parents, and likely a very similar environment, likely very similar diet and weight and sunlight exposure and exposure to viruses and hygiene and things like that. So some people think this is strong evidence for a chance effect or for subtle environmental factors. And now the next question you may ask is what can we do about this genetic risk? Let's say that you are the child of someone with multiple sclerosis and you're concerned about your risk. Well, there's no specific recommendation for genetic testing because genetic testing can't really tell you anything. We can't tell you whether or not you're going to get multiple sclerosis. Also, we don't really recommend screening, generally speaking. And the reason is because some people could have white matter lesions on MRI, but they wouldn't really meet the diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis if they didn't have any symptoms. So screening in someone with no symptoms is probably very low in yield. Probably the only thing you could reasonably do is try to minimize your risk factors. So don't smoke, try to maintain a healthy diet so that you don't become obese during your youth, which is one of the risk factors for multiple sclerosis. Possibly taking vitamin D uh, supplements or getting good sunlight exposure may reduce your risk, for example. And there are many other unknown risk factors which we have to address. So if you have any questions or comments or requests for future videos, please post in the comments below.